Okay, good afternoon everyone. My name is Rogelio Sullivan. I'm a program manager here at Power America. And I'd like to thank you all for joining us today and welcome you to our monthly technical webinar series. We have these uh, webinars on the first Wednesday of each month at noon. We invite all of our university partners present the uh, research work that they're doing on their Power America projects, as well as other special invited guests on occasion uh, on topics of interest to the uh, wide band gap communities. Next month's presentation is on November 1st, and that will be given by Professor Helen Lee from Florida State University. She'll be discussing her commercial compact PV inverter project. But today we have the pleasure of Dr. Kyung Lee from Virginia Tech. Uh, Dr. Lee received his BS and MS degrees in power electronics from Zhejiang University in China in 2003 and 2006 respectively, and the PhD degree from Virginia Tech University in Blacksburg, Virginia in 2011. He's currently an assistant professor in the Center for Power Electronic Systems of Virginia Tech, and his research interests include distributed power systems, high frequency power conversion, and high density electronic packaging and integration. And with that brief introduction, uh, please welcome uh, Dr. Xiong Li. Hello, everyone. So it's my great honor to present this presentation to all of you and also on the staff of Power America and to sponsor this research work. So today, my presentation is about the high frequency modular power conversion from medium voltage AC to low voltage DC. So this technology can be used for many different applications. So the first example, so our main application I want to talk about is for data center. So this picture shows some conventional, this low voltage AC power distribution in the today data center. So basically, we have this medium voltage come in, we we'll go through this line frequency transformer, then step down to this low voltage AC, for example, 480 volt. And the people will use this 480 volt to distribute inside the data center. Okay, then eventually go inside the, the server hall. But one problem for this one is today that the power for data center become higher and higher. So you can imagine the current on this di distribution line is huge. Okay, so for example, for this uh, just uh, uh, 2,500 kilo VA system, the current on this 480 volt distribution line will more than 3,000. So this, this 3,000 amp current will give you huge conduction loss. The total conduction loss will be around 2% of the total power. And in the future, this kind of conduction loss will become even higher. And also within the, the, the server hall, because the input voltage is this 480 volt AC, so normally people use this UPS before deliver this power to the server. So you have this AC UPS, and also you have another transformer. And after this transformer, the input becomes 200 volt AC, then you will go through the PFC AC DC stage to get 400 volt DC, then from the 400 volt DC, you will step down to 12 volt, then eventually you reach the motherboard. So you can see there are so many power converging stages. So if we do some quick, quick calculations, start from beginning, come from this line frequency transformer, and go to end, the total efficiency for this power conversion is just around 73%. So today, this system is not a very efficient system. So our proposed architecture will be like this one. So we propose directly we transfer this medium voltage AC to the server, to server hall. So we can use this, for example, four kilovolt AC as distribution voltage. In this way, we can reduce the current on this line. Then we can reduce the production loss. But we have to figure out a way to transfer, to convert this is a high voltage AC to low voltage DC inside server hall. So one solution, we can use line frequency transformer, but that one too bulky. So in here, we propose to not use line frequency transformer, but use some high frequency AC DC converter. So people also call this one solid state transformer. So we use this high frequency AC DC converter directly step down. It's a 4.16 kV directly to 400 volt DC. The inside server hall, we will just use the 400 volt DC as the distribution voltage. We can see inside this server hall, since we use the 400 volt DC, then we do not need to use this AC UPS. We can just put a battery, for example, on the travel bus. 
Then between the 400 volt DC and 12 volt bus, just one DC DC converter. And so the whole system becomes very simple. And if we calculate efficiency for this proposed system, the efficiency could reach around 84%, so much higher than conventional data center architecture. And also we can save the copper on this distributing line, because right now we only need around 350 amp current on this high voltage AC distributing line. So you also can save the copper, the copper cost. So in this kind of proposed architecture, the key technology, one of the key technologies is the high frequency AC DC converter. Okay. So because this one needs to step down this high voltage AC to low voltage DC, and also this one needs to make sure we satisfy the insulation requirement. And the, here is the proposed uh, circuit topology for this high frequency AC DC system. So basically, this could, this is a three-phase three system. So this diagram just shows the one of the phase. And the input is a high voltage AC. Then we will put the several module in series. We have several this AC DC module in a yellow color in series. An input terminal. Then the output terminal we have this DC DC module in the blue color connect to the this AC DC module. Then the, the output of this DC DC module will in parallel. So basically, the whole system is like the input terminal in series, output terminal in parallel, and it's a modular design. And with this kind of topology, we can handle high voltage AC and input terminal, and we can produce low voltage DC and output terminal. And for this AC-DC stage, we can just use conventional this cascade edge bridge <coughs> to produce high voltage AC and input terminal. Okay. So the design for this AC-DC could be very simple, just edge bridge. So by using different control, we can produce this low frequency AC signal, also high volt and input terminal. And output terminal of AC DC state, it can become just an 800 volt DC. Then we just use this DC DC module to step down 800 volt DC to 400 volt DC. Then this 400 volt DC will go inside server hall. And if we do some simple calculations, if we only design the DC DC module with the power equal to, for example, 15 kilowatt, okay, so not a very high power for one module. But uh, for each phase, for example, if we use five modules in series, so for each phase we can have around 75 kilowatt. And if we have three phase system, so this one system will give you 225 kilowatt. So which means we can just use the very standard low low power module eventually put them in series and in parallel to produce high power system. And in this, in this kind of whole system, the, design, the key design challenge is this DC-DC module. So as I mentioned, for AC DC, it's an ice bridge and it has no transformer involved. But for DC-DC, that will be have transformer to provide this uh, isolation between the high voltage and low voltage side. And we want to reduce the, the size of this DC-DC module then we have to go to higher frequency and to reduce the transformer size. So in this presentation, basically we'll focus on talk about how to design this high frequency DC DC module with this transformer. And for this DC DC stage, first of all, we use this resin converter as the, this uh, topology. The reason we use resin converter because in this one we can achieve the DVI turn on. So this is real voltage switching turn on. So there's no turn on loss. And for this resin converter, the turn off current, so here is the turn off current, it's also very small. It's just a magnetizing current of your magnetizing inductance. So you also can achieve very small turn off loss. And also on the separate side, we have also the DCS, real current turn, turn off for this signal rectifier. So basically the switching loss of this resin converter is very small. And at the primary side, our input voltage is 800 volt. So we will use 1.2 kV thin carbide device primary side. And the secondary side, the output voltage is 400 volt. Then we will use 600 volt GAN device. So by using this wide band gap device, we are able to push frequency to very high for this resin converter. And here we did some loss breakdown for the whole system before we build the hardware. So as I mentioned, we use the 1.2 kV thin carbide device, primary side, and the separate side, we use the GAN device. 
And because the gain device right now, the current handling capability is not so high, so we propose to have two terminals in parallel and output side, even for one module to handle higher power. So the transformer will have two separate side winding, and these two winding eventually will go to two four bridge, and output terminal of these two four bridge will parallel together. So we see a lot of breakdown for different frequency. So our starting point is the 200 kilohertz. Okay. So you can see with 200 kilohertz, the total device loss is just around 90 watts. And uh, so here we have the breakdown. The bottom one is the primary side conduction loss, and this yellow one, orange one, is the secondary side, secondary side conduction loss. And for this blue and the green, this is just the turn off loss and driving loss. So basically, you can see for this converter, the majority loss just comes from conduction loss, and we have very small the switch related loss. So due to this reason, we can further increase frequency to 300 kilohertz, 400 kilohertz, and 500, 500 kilohertz without increase this total loss too much. So we increase switch frequency, the conduction loss keeps almost the same, but we just increase a little bit of, of the switching loss. So right now at 500 kilohertz, the green area and the blue area become a little bit larger, but still much smaller compared with this uh, orange bar and uh, this uh, uh, gray bar. So even at the 500 kilohertz, our total loss is just around the 106, 6 watts. Okay. So the whole system is, well, for this one module, is 15 kilowatts. So you can see the total device loss is very small. So due to this reason, our design target is for is, is 500 kilohertz. So we want to try is a very high frequency to see what how how small this transformer could be at such a high frequency. And before we build this hardware, also we did some survey of other people's work and we want to compare with other people's work. And here we found out for today for this DC DC module, most of people they limit the frequency below 20 kilohertz. Okay. And for the power, they can have 10 kilowatt, 20 kilowatt, but even they put it to more than 100 kilowatt. Okay. And for our target, we are target very high frequency, 500 kilohertz, okay, much higher than today's other people's design. But we want to start with a little bit of low power, 15 kilowatt, because eventually, as we mentioned, we can just put this module in series and parallel eventually to get a high power. So at the beginning, I don't think that need needs to go to high power. So this is our target. And in here, the most important part is this transformer design. Okay, because for this transformer, we have to make sure at a high frequency, the transformer has a very small loss. Also, we have to make sure this transformer could be used for this uh, medium voltage application. Because although the input terminal for this one DC DC converter is just 800 volt, but eventually we'll connect this, uh, a, this terminal, one of this terminal to the medium voltage AC terminal. So which means we have to make sure the insulation can satisfy the medium voltage requirement. Okay. So first of all, we want to select the topology for this transformer. And because we have to handle this medium voltage AC, so first thing we need to do, we just separate the primary side winding with the secondary side winding. So we cannot mix them. So for the, this type one, this, this example number one, which is conventional EI call. So on the top part, we use the, we put the primary winding, and the bottom, we put the the separate side winding, okay? And in the, in the middle, we have some insulation material. So this is a type one transformer structure. And then for the type two, we, we can use just UI call, so we no longer use EE call, the EI call. And we split the primary side winding into two legs. So the primary side winding is still on the top part, but right now, we split the winding into two legs, so for each leg, we'll have less turn. And we do the same thing for the separate side winding was to split the second side winding on the two legs. And uh, in this circuit design, as we mentioned, naturally we have two output terminals for the transformer winding. So right now, the first uh, output terminal, the first uh, separate side winding were on the left-hand side of this is the UI call. And then the second one, the red color winding were on the right-hand side of this UI call. So for this uh, second type, for the type two, that potential benefit is if we started MMF, Due to this less turn number on each lag, we will have less current go through this winding on each lag, then we will have less MMF. 
And because this is a small MMF, we have given this less weekly induction. So selectively speaking, the type two structure will give you less liquid inductance. And because this less liquid inductance also means the less liquid flux, so which means we can have a smaller winding loss for the type two structure. Okay. So we also did some simulation. So we use this FEA simulation to compare the two structures, the so left hand side is the EI cost structure, and the right hand side is the UI cost structure. So you can see for EI cost structure, this red color means very strong magnetic flux field. Okay. So in the middle of this around L gap, we have a very strong magnetic flux field. And this kind of flux will go will cut your winding to somehow increase winding loss and also will create large liquid inductors. And for the right hand side, because we speed the winding, so we reduce the this magnetic flux field and also we can reduce the liquid inductance. So if you compare some results for the type two for the primary side, we only get six microhenry liquid inductor. For the type one, it's almost double. It's 12 microhenry. And the same thing on the secondary side. So for the secondary side, for the type two, just 3.6 microhenry. For the primary side, almost six microhenry. So from this liquid induction point of view, and also winding loss point of view, we prefer the type two structure. Okay, so the following discussion will only focus on the type two structure. And uh, we right now decide that it's a transformer structure. So the next step is you need to de design the parameter of this transformer to make sure we can get small loss and also we can satisfy its insulation requirement for its high voltage application. So as I mentioned, for this structure, eventually we'll put all these modules in the primary side in series. So for example, for this first module, eventually we'll say high voltage AC mm -hmm. go through the AC DC stage and reach the DC DC stage. Okay. Um, one, two, it's SHEA1989 at Verizon. Okay, and for the easy stage, the separate side to the 400 volt DC, so which means we have to make sure the insulation between the primary side winding and the separate side winding can handle at least 4.16 kV, because it's 4.6 kV eventually will force on the primary side of the transformer. And also between the primary side winding and the bobbing, also the highest voltage will become 4.6 kV. So also we have to make sure the bobbing has a good insulation capability. But between the this uh, second side winding and the bobbing, because the second side only say the low voltage DC 400 volt, then we only need to satisfy 400 volt insulation requirements for the between the bobbing and the second side winding. And based on this kind of insulation requirement, we we start to do the insulation design. And our insulation design is followed IEEE standard. So we know that right now, if we use the 4.6 kV as input voltage, and if we want to use a dry type of transformer, so the highest voltage, we have to make sure that this transformer can withstand is the 30 kV. So we have to pass this 30 kV input testing. And also, according to the IEEE standard, for this 4.6 16 kV application, the minimal creepage distance should be 41.6 millimeter. Okay? So we have to make sure we have at least enough yeah. creepage distance. And also for the minimal clearance distance for this 30 kV has email around the 42 millimeter. Okay? One two so the, the last thing, so right now we're determining is the creepage distance and also current distance. So last, the, the next step is to determine the material and the thickness for this bobbing and the insulation tape. And all this material for the bobbing and insulation tape should be satisfied with the 30 kV peak voltage. And for the bobbing, we did some survey. And eventually, we narrowed down these three choice. And among these three choice, this PT, FE material, has the highest uh, dielectrical strength. Okay, so it's uh, almost 20 kV per millimeter. And uh, so in here, we want to reduce the transformer size. So we prefer to use this, uh, this uh, PTFE to give the highest uh, dielectrical strength so we can reduce the thickness of the bobby. So, and also according to this uh, classical technology handbook, so there's a simple equation for us to calculate the thickness of this bobby. So this H1 is the bobbing material thickness. 
and that will require the warranty is 30 kV, and then we give them margin. So right now we give 50% margin. So that's the reason we time the 1.5, and eventually we can calculate the thickness for the bobbin is around 4, 4 millimeter, okay, for this particular material. And then we can do the same thing for the insulation tape. And then we narrow down to three choice. And in these three choice, the 3M material has a very high dielectric strength, but also very high thermal conductivity. So compared to other material, this thermal conductivity is much higher. Okay. And consider in this, in this transformer, we may have the larger loss. So we also prefer to use this larger thermal conductivity for the insulation tape. So we choose the 3M material. And also, when we design the thickness, we give 50% margin. Then eventually, the total thickness for this tape is one millimeter. Okay, so right now, we finished the insulation material selection. So next step is to optimize the transformer loss. Okay, so before we optimize loss, we have to use the equation to predict the call loss and winding loss. So when we calculate call loss, we assume the flux inside the transformer core is uniform. Okay. Then we just use the call loss density PV times the, the transform volume to calculate the call loss. So that's why it's straightforward. But for the winding loss, it's very complicated. So in here, although we are using this wire, so all this winding is this wire, but still we will have some, it's the skin um, uh, proximity effect and the eddy current introduced inside of this, uh, this wire. So we have to use somehow a little bit complicated equation to calculate winding loss. Okay, so here we follow the Dr. Stalliwell's method to calculate winding, winding loss. So here I will, I will skip the details. Okay, so basically we use this equation and then we can predict winding loss very well. And uh, so next page, we just plot this loss with given its uh, color density. So our starting point is uh, we just choose some particular color density, for example, 300. And we know switch frequency 500, 500 kilohertz. And according to the switch frequency, we will select this, uh, this wire. Okay. So the AWG right now is 44. Also, according to frequency, we we'll select core material. So this uh, magnetic ferrite, 3F36. And based on this uh, material and this wire, we can calculate the winding loss and call loss with different turn number. So this N on the horizontal axis means the turn number for the transformer. And we found out with different, when we increase the number, the winding loss will increase for the we will decrease call loss. So from total loss point of view, that's some optimized region for me to, for her to select 10 numbers. So that's around 10 to 12 turns for this particular transformer. Okay. And also we studied the impact of 10 number on the transformer volume. And also found out that this is a U-shaped curve. Okay, if we increase 10 number at the beginning, the total volume will decrease, but eventually the total volume will increase because right now we use too many turns in here. And also, that the preferred region is around the 10 to 15 turns. Okay. So based on this curve, we can combine this loss data with the volume, transform volume data put on this one curve. So on this diagram, the horizontal axis is the volume for this transformer, and the vertical axis is loss. And here, we have diff different data points that mean different turns number. So for, from this curve, you can see the lower corner, the left-hand side corner is the best design region because in this area, we have lowest loss and also smallest size for this transformer. And in this region, you can see the best selection for the turn number is around 12 to 14. So in this example, we can pick 12 turns for this particular design. Okay? But as I mentioned at the beginning, when we plot this curve, we fix the PV at 300. Okay, so this one also could be different. So in next step, we change the PV value. So we sweep the PV from 100 up to 700. So for, we, for each given PV, we can get the, this U-shaped curve. And for each curve, we can find out the optimal point is at least the left-hand side, lower corner, okay? So for each curve, we can find the optimal design point. And if we connect all these design points together, then we call it optimal design curve. So this curve basically tells us the trade-off between the transformer size and transformer loss. Okay, so if if we want to reduce the loss, you have to somehow increase the size. Okay. So for our final prototype, we just want to balance the loss and the size. So we still choose this PV code 300. So this is the 
this location. So with this one, the total loss is around 74 watt, and the transformer size is one liter. Okay, so this is our final prototype for the transformer. So as I mentioned, we use the UI core, and on the top, we have the primary side winding, and the bottom, we have the separate side winding on the two legs. Okay. And then after we finish the hardware, we also do the measurement to compare with our simulation result. So here we have the measurement for different inductors. So LM, it means the magnetizing inductors. So LKP is the liquid inductor on the primary side. LKS is the liquid inductor on the secondary side. And this one is the FBA simulation result. And this one is the test result. So you can see our testing result can match with simulation very well. Okay, so basically means we got our design value for the inductors. And the next step is to do the insulation testing. So we work with ABB to finish this insulation testing. So the so first testing is the uh, is, uh, basic lighting input testing. So we will apply this uh, 300, uh, 30 kV to this uh, transformer. So this is our transformer and the test. Okay. And we will apply this 30 kV. And this the total testing will last for 50 microseconds. Okay. And we want to, we will measure this curve, the watery curve, to see whether we, we have smooth curve or we have some collapse. Okay, if the, the curve is very smooth, which means we can pass this testing. So next page, this one shows the testing results. So we, we did this testing twice. So the red waveform is the one testing, and the blue waveform is not testing. So you can see for both testing, the curve is very smooth. Mm -hmm, yeah. The water can go to 30.3 kV and eventually gradually reduce, and the, the two curves, they overlap very well, which means the, we pass this test in both, in both two testing. Okay. So that's the first test. And the second one is the transform apply water test. So in here, we will apply a line frequency, so it's not pulse, it's a line frequency 12 kV on this transformer between the primary side and the secondary side, one day. And also between the primary side one and the bobbin. So right with the bobbin is the short to the ground. Okay. And for this one, we just need to observe during this test in the 60 seconds. So whether we have water clap. Okay. If in this 60 seconds there's no water clap, which means we pass the test. Okay. So in this test that we also observe no clap, so which means we pass this testing. And the last one is the partial discharge test. So in here, we'll apply this this kind of testing waveform to a transformer. Okay, the highest voltage is around 7.4 kV, and this one will last for 30 seconds. Then we'll reduce the voltage to 4.4 kV, and this one will last for 180 seconds. And during this kind of testing period, we'll measure total this partial discharge come from this transformer. And the requirement is that the total partial discharge should be lower than 50 picocoolant, okay? And eventually, our test result shows that we only got 3.8 picocoolant, okay? So it's much less than the requirement, so which means we also pass this the partial discharge test. Okay, so with the help of ABB, we verified this transformer design can be used for this 4.60 kV application, and we pass all the insulation requirements. So the, this one is, so then we use this transformer to build the, the converter. Okay, so this is a 50 kilo, kilowatt, 500 or 500 kilohertz resin converter. And uh, here, the primary side, you can see that's the same kind of MOSFET. And on the separate side, you have GAN device, but GAN device is very small. Okay, you cannot see very clearly, but basically in this location, we parallel several GAN devices. And you know, that's the transformer. The total power density for this converter is very high. So even we, after we add heat sink, the total power density for this one is 48 watt per cubic inch. And the total thickness is just 3.5 inch. It's very low profile design. And here is the testing waveform for this resin converter at the 500 kilohertz. So we test from 4 kilowatt up to 4 power 15 kilowatt. So you can see even at the 4 power 15 kilowatt, the waveform, the VDS waveform is still very clean because this is a resin converter, so there's almost no reading on the VDS. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
And here is the total efficiency, and we have the peak efficiency reach 98% efficiency. And at the heavy load, it's still about 97. And if you go to the 4 kilowatts, still about 96. Okay. Okay, so that's uh, that's all for today's presentations. Okay, thank you very much for your patience. So any questions? Uh, so I had a question. Okay. Um, what's your so what is your next step? Um, this looks uh, looks good. So you have uh, further steps planned. Okay. So actually, this project was funded by Power America the last year. So we have already finished this project. Okay. So in the next step, so we're right now looking for the funding. To continue can support us, so can maybe we can move forward. Thanks, Jing. Thank you, uh, Professor. Uh, uh, nice work. Uh, I have um, another question. Uh, uh, what is the uh, uh, switching frequency range when you uh, regulate the uh, load? Okay, so so right now we. Only fix the switch frequency at the 500 kilohertz because we thinking for this kind of structure we can use AC DC to adjust the bus of the input voltage of the DC DC stage. Okay, so here, so here we want to design the DC DC module like the DC transformer for the first step. So if the off voltage change, we just rely on the input voltage to we can, we can adjust this 800 volt to accommodate off voltage change. Okay, so you will adjust that uh, uh, ACDC output voltage. Right, right. Okay, okay. Uh, another question you have for that transformer. Uh, since uh, the, uh, the requirement for this uh, medium voltage isolation, and do, I, I know you, uh, seems like you pass all the uh, tests. Uh, what about the uh, clearance? The the requirement for the clearance is like 42 millimeter. So yes. what So what is that the uh, clearance? Okay, so right now we just follow the IEEE standard. Okay, as I mentioned here, so we just follow this standard to find out. Okay, if we want to handle it 30 kV. At least we need a 42 millimeter clearance, okay. mm. but that does not mean this is optimized design. Okay. So at this first stage, we just want to verify we have this reasonable design can handle this 30 kV. Then for the next step, so if we can find uh, this uh, additional funding to continue support this project, we can further optimize our transformer design. Mm. Okay, thank you. I have a, another question. Um, so the the, the series uh, connection uh, on the front end does that pose any unique challenges, um, or is it you know from from a balancing standpoint, um, or not really? Okay. Yes. So for this ACDC stage, we are in series in the, in the, in the input terminal. So from control point of view, we do need to have some special control to balance this voltage. But for this one, actually, there are many people working on this uh, cascade edge bridge okay, to produce this kind of line frequency AC voltage, high voltage at the input terminal, and also guarantee the voltage balance of output of AC DC stage. So, so there are many people working in this area. So for this project right now, we do not focus on this uh, AC DC stage. But you're right, there are some challenges in here. But I think that eventually we can stop all the challenges for this ACT state stage. So this is Rogelio. I, unfortunately, I was muted. and I'm not sure if you answered this question already, but someone sent this to the chat window. And he asked, why do you choose the two-stage configurations rather than 
only use a single AC to DC stage, and is there any setback or any disadvantage of doing that, or any main advantage to add another DC to DC stage? Uh, okay, so if I don't know what does he mean, the single AC DC stage. Okay, so to me, right now for this kind of this is the topology would have two objectives. The first objective is step down from this high voltage AC to low voltage DC. But the second objective is to provide this isolation. Okay. So if with your single stage, I don't know what the best topology can provide these two aspects together. So in here, my reason you will separate two stages because we rely on the AC DC to step down is the high voltage AC to 800 volt DC, basically low voltage, low voltage, low voltage DC first. Then we rely on DC DC to produce the is the isolation. Okay, but we design is DC DC. We can design this one with very high frequency, so we can reduce the transformer size a lot. Okay, thanks. That's a kind of a system level question. Uh, uh, at the very beginning, you talked about the potential energy savings as well as the copper savings from architecting a uh, data center in the way yes. that you propose. And those seem to be pretty significant, and I'm sure those are valuable benefits to people who operate data centers. But I know the reliability is just as high, if not higher, a priority for them. Uh, operational availability or uptime, there are a lot of different measures. And so what are the implications for reliability? even with the mature technology and the configuration that you're proposing? So, well, yes, the reliability is always the, the, the big issue to have to face. Okay. So to be honest, I don't have answer at this moment. Okay. So yes, yeah, so right now we'll replace this uh, line frequency transformer with the, this high frequency ACDC stage. So some people may think, okay, you reduce reliability. But in other words, we also reduce the total number of these power conversion stage. So you can see for the first one, conventional one, you have so many, okay, I don't know. Okay, for this conventional architecture, you have so many converter inside the delivery path. But for the second solution, although we replace line fixed transformer, we also eliminate many converging stage. So from system point of view, I think we also have some benefit even from reliability point of view. Okay, but I don't have this uh, clear answer at this moment. Okay, thank you. Are there any more questions? Feel free to speak up. So I guess the question is: um, this these materials going to be made available to us? Uh, yes. Uh, if you receive the WebEx invitation from me, Rogelio Sullivan, just send me an email and I'll send you a copy of uh, Dr. Lee's presentation as soon as he shares it with me. Thank you. You're welcome. I have another question. Uh, let me. Uh, I notice the question is I noticed that DC bus capacitor is aluminum. Is it going to be the issue for thermal management compared to a film capacitor? Okay, but okay, in our design, since we kind of have very high efficiency, okay, so for the DC DC stage, you will reach 98% efficiency, so we do not generate too much heat on this uh, converter. So I don't think that there, there will be issue on the cap side. Okay. Uh, on the uh, output side, the DC DC, so you have a two branch impeller. Do you need to do something for current sharing? Okay, so in here, yes. We have two modules, an output side impeller. But you can see in the primary side, that's in series. So because the transformer winding primary side is in series, so naturally we will guarantee the service side winding have current balancing. So as long as we have very symmetrical transformer design. Okay. 
So because the coupling coefficient is between the blue winding and the purple one, and the red between the purple one is very, very close. So as long as the primary is not in series, the secondary is not winding will have naturally have curve balancing. Okay. Are there any final questions for Dr. Lee? All right, thank you very much, Chong. That was a very informative and uh, very well uh, delivered presentation. I really appreciate it. And uh, thank you all for joining us today. We'll see you again on uh, November 1st at 12 noon. Bye-bye. Okay, thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Okay. Hey. All right. We're done. That was good. I, I actually can't log in.